MK. Um, went over a lot of stuff on uh, image compression and how to properly use the telephoto control the composition of your shot because that is incredibly important and it pisses me off that nobody really talks about it. Um, so let's talk about bokeh. Bokeh. The uh, out of uh, focus uh, portions of uh, illumination in the composition that the human eye cannot resolve and which are not captured and recorded. Let's uh, talk about uh, the four different types of bokeh and how to use each one. Um, basically, almost everybody knows about depth of field bokeh. Obviously, it's out of uh, focus um, well, with, uh, you know, say aperture f2.8 on this 300 millimeter. Okay, what's well, out of focus? Well, what's the intensity of that bokeh? What is the nature of it? Is it creamy, dreamy? You know, does it render it splotchy? There are a lot of lens attributes, as I mentioned, countless times that are important, and obviously how lens renders bokeh is uh, incredibly important to a lot of different people. And you can have crappy bokeh, you can have good, but what are the other types of bokeh? Okay, we've got depth of field. Okay, well, we know about that. Does it render it good? Does it render it bad? Um, peripheral bloom. Uh, telephoto bokeh or impressionistic bokeh when you can actually take and I covered this in the past two videos but we have to talk about it so we're going to talk about the four different types of bokeh depth of field bokeh whether it's good bad or crappy obviously based upon lens construction focal length typically of course you know shorter focals like 40 millimeters 35 they have crappy bokeh there are exceptions to that uh, not many but there certainly are so we're going to talk about the peripheral bloom. Impression, I refer to this as impressionistic bokeh. I can take a shot. Remember this example? Everybody should know this. this is the easiest way to understand lens compression or perspective control using uh, lens focal length. We've got the subject here, mid-range here, background here. Okay. I'm going to keep the exact same magnification. Okay. I'm going to have to back up if I use a longer lens. Okay. Person at 50 millimeters here. Okay. Now, if I'm going to put a 200 millimeter on okay and keep the exact same magnification of the person on the image recorded I'm gonna have to back the way the hell up but now I've changed the bokeh back here I'm using this 300 millimeter of 2.8 this is why people use 135 millimeter 200 millimeter 300 millimeter like this for portraiture it's like why the hell would you do that you can't get close to them yeah I can get close to them but it renders the image differently I get this beautiful um, impressionistic background by causing what I've always called, I don't think anybody else refers to it as this, nobody even really talks about it, they talk about uh, axial magnification, the centermost portion of the lens. What happens from between 50 millimeters and 200 is the periphery blooms, kind of like a flower blooming, okay? That's why a moon looks gigantic. It's like, how the hell do they get that moon so damn big in that picture? That's because instead of taking a picture of the landscape like this with 40 millimeters, they took it with a 200 millimeter now, like the house, if this is the house, i got a picture of a house here. You know, trees in the background, there's a big moon back here. If I move back with the 200 millimeter, I keep the house the exact same magnification. The house really hasn't changed any. But the moon bloomed. The moon, the moon here went from this to this. Oh, damn, that makes sense. That's so easy to understand. Okay, so peripheral bloom. It's a different type of bokeh. It makes it really impressionistic. Uh, professionals that are experts, professional photographer, expert in light manipulation and composition. Understanding this is part of professional photography, is knowing how to use, it's like, why on earth would I use a lens like this for portraiture? I mean, are you like taking pictures of people on the beach far away so they can, no, no. Oh, that's valid as well. Uh, <laughs> you're using this to change the nature of the bokeh. Change the composition. It looks totally different with this. If you got the exact same magnification of the person, then it does taking with an 85 millimeter. Say 85 millimeter f 2.8 versus the 300 millimeter f 2.8. Radically different looking. It's like, well, they're a lot bigger. No, no, no. The exact same magnification on the sensor. 35 millimeter at f 2.8 or 300 millimeter f 2.8. Same magnification on the sensor. Here, here. 85 millimeter, 300 millimeter. Now. What changes, also like if you got a really shallow depth of field using 85 millimeter, which a lot of the good 85 millimeters are f1.4, is that instead of this being the background like in a landscape, this is the background of someone's face, and this is the background of someone's face right here. Check the links below. I mentioned this in the prior three videos. What happens is you've actually taken someone's face and gone from this to this. 
It's like, wow, she's ugly, she's beautiful, she's ugly, she's beautiful, she's ugly, she's beautiful. You get it? Okay, that's the other type of bokeh. That's the second type of bokeh. The peripheral bloom, the, uh, the lens perspective, the image compression, or the foreshortening to uh, change the bokeh of the composition, typically in portraiture. But also, you know, landscape, anything else. Um, the other type of bokeh, bokeh number three out of four, aperture blade bokeh. The number of blades and how rounded the blades are. Are they rounded or are they straight blade? Uh, aperture blades are like this or they're like this. They're rounded or they're straight on the lens. Obviously, rounded blades render a more creamy circular bokeh. Um, more aperture blades render a more circular bokeh. Like six-bladed apertures, okay, don't look as good as nine-bladed apertures, straight but straight right now. Six straight, six blade, uh, six blade uh, straight apertures versus uh, nine blade straight apertures. But then again, we could also be talking about straight apertures versus curved apertures. That is why the portraiture lenses use curved aperture blades. Oh my God, that makes so much sense. Yes, exactly. Um, the fourth type of bokeh. So we've got over three types of bokeh here: depth of field bokeh, um, lens perspective bokeh. Uh, aperture blade bokeh, number four, catadioptric bokeh, ring bokeh, or donut bokeh. Uh, what is this from? Mirror lenses. Oh, nobody uses mirror lenses. Oh, uh, you want to bet? Mirror lenses generally uh, kind of suck optically. Nikon made a few mirrored lenses. A lot of people make mirrored lenses. That way you can get like a 500 millimeter um, lens on the cheap. It doesn't have many lens elements in it. It's like a, uh, a reflex mirror for, uh, you know, astronomy. Typically, they're 500 millimeter up to 1,000 millimeter, even way beyond that, but they're really slow. Uh, like Nikon's or F8, uh, like an old Tamron's F5.6, which is pretty damn fast, and that's, that lens is pretty rare. But it, what it does is that some people actually hate this type of bokeh, but I think it's beautiful. It renders a catadioptric bokeh, ring bokeh, instead of the, uh, the, the uh, out of uh, focus bokeh circles being uh, even and circular, they're also circular, but this time they're donuts. Donut bokeh! It's very beautiful. I love it. It is just the cat's ass to me. And of course, that's a compositional choice. You don't want to be rendering donut bokeh on everything, but if you want to render a dreamy shot, it's like, damn, you know, I forgot about this. If I have a, a mirror lens, which is not so awesome optically, some of them are, if I got a mirror lens, I can render this beautiful uh, portraiture bokeh with these beautiful donuts of light. It's like hundreds of donuts. You can't add that crap in Photoshop. Can't be done. Um, and that might sell your portraiture. If you know what to do, it's like, well, I want to make something dreamy and ethereal. I want some donut bokeh. Ring bokeh, catadioptric bokeh, same thing. So, you got depth of field bokeh, which everybody pretty, pretty much knows about, i.e. vis-a-vis -vis the aperture, 2.8, 5.6, f22, which there is no bokeh really there. There can be, obviously. Uh, peripheral bokeh, or bokeh, I mean, uh, excuse me, peripheral bloom, uh, uh, lens compression bokeh, and then aperture blade bokeh, uh, number of apertures, and whether the aperture blades are straight or rounded, and last, the catadioptric bokeh. So there is the most and best and fullest example, and there are examples below in the links of these various types of bokeh, so check the links below, and uh, this is the most complete and full and people are like, oh my god, there's four types of bokeh. Yeah, there's four types of bokeh. There are... Actually, there's like technically two more, but the other two are just modalities of these two, really. So so technically, there's six types of bokeh, but uh, this, is, this is sufficient. So, yeah, there's four types of bokeh. And now you know it. And this is the first video to illuminate the four types of bokeh. You saw it here. You saw it first. Thank you so much. Like this video and drop me a buck or two. Go tell me to jump off a cliff. Go tell me to... Uh, shaft myself, whatever makes you happy, whatever tickles your pickle. Uh, <laughs> I'll catch you later. Thank you for watching. This has been another video uh, sponsored by Kentucky Crackwater. Uh, free diabetes in every can. Thank you.